Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. Welcome if you're new here. I'm excited for today's video. We're going to be comparing 12 different types of acrylic paint and finding out which one is best. And when I'm talking about finding out which one is best, it might be best for a certain project or best for a certain type of look that you're going for in a painting. Um, not necessarily best overall, um, better than any of, the, any of the other ones. Some of them will definitely be better than other ones overall, but when we get to the higher end ones, some will be better for certain types of projects and other ones for other types of projects. So we're going to compare brands such as Liquitex and Golden, Artist Loft, um, Windsor and Newton, even down to just craft paint that you can buy at the dollar store. So we can really see the differences um, between these types of acrylic paint. Uh, we're going to do uh, some tests on them, we're going to do some mixing tests, we're also just going to see the consistency overall when you first take it out of the bottle, and then we're going to use a black canvas, and I'm going to paint a little bit on each of them, and we'll see how they hold up, see how transparent they are, or see if they're very opaque, and yeah. So as we go through each of the different um, paints, I will introduce each of them. I will talk about what's on the label. You'll, I'll show that to you as well. And I'll talk about the price and talk about just a little bit um, of each of them as we are going through each of them. Then at the end, I'll give my overall thoughts and talk about what I think the best one is for certain things and what I think the worst one is. And we'll go from there. So let's jump into this. All right, here are the price points for each of these different kinds of paints that we're going to be looking at. Most of these prices I found on michaels.ca, so the Michaels Canada website. The prices, as you, as you can see there, are in Canadian dollars. And at the very end, I've done price per milliliter. In the end, it would equal out to be the same ratio if I did um, price per ounce as well. I just did milliliters um, because that was easier for me. Um, the craft paint and the Stevenson were not purchased at Michael's. Stevenson was actually purchased at a local college um, bookstore for their art students, and the craft paint was at the Dollar Tree, a Canadian dollar store. I, I think they do have Dollar Tree in the U.S. as well. Um, but all the rest were at Michael's. I know that depending on where you get your art supplies, you might find the prices are slightly different, and that's fine. This is just to give you kind of a base point um, so you can see, generally um, speaking, which ones are cheaper, which ones are more expensive. I tried to put the different sizes that are available in for each of these types of paint. Um, you can see there I've got, uh, for example, Liquitex Basics comes in four different sizes. However, just be aware that not all of the colors are always available in each of those sizes. The smaller the size, the more colors are usually available. As the size increases, your variety of colors will also decrease. Um, so for example, with the Liquitex Basics, that um, 946 milliliters or 32 ounce one, I'm pretty sure it was just black and white. Those were the only two, titanium white and I think it was a Mars black if I remember right. Um, otherwise it was, um, yeah, you had to go smaller to get a, a variety. So keep that in mind as you're looking through them, but I thought it would be a good idea to show prices and you can give, give it a, give it a look over. All right. So as you can see here, we have all of the 12 different types that we're going to be looking at labeled out here on this black canvas. And the reason I'm using a black canvas is because then we'll be able to see, um, more, um, how transparent or how opaque each of these brands are. So what we're going to do, we're going to go through each of them separately. Um, as we go through one, I will talk about it a little bit. I'll show you the bottle and with a picture and show you like what's on the back of it and talk about all that stuff. And then we'll go into what's actually going on here on the canvas. So our first one is craft paint. All right, here we have our craft paint and it literally just says white on it. Um, this was got at the Dollar Tree in Canada, so it is a dollar store craft paint. On the back there you can see it says fast drying, water-based permanent, um, used for general arts and crafts, um, painting, and such and such, and that's about it. So like I said, this was from the dollar store. I'm going to shake this up nice. And we are going to put a little bit onto the canvas. I'm going to try to use the same amount for each of them for our streak test. And then what I'm going to do is mix a little bit of each of them with some Thalo Blue of the Golden brand. 
because golden is highly pigmented this is a, a powerful color and we'll see the the abilities of each of our whites as we go through so we'll do a little bit of that that on the bottom of each of these as well so let's do a little bit on top here you can see um, the initial consistency as this comes out once it comes out shake it to the bottom so it's hard to see from that angle for you from up there and with that much but it is actually spreading out um, it's not holding its shape at all it's yeah it's spreading out as I put it on there and I put a good drop on there it's yeah it seems pretty liquidy so let's do a little test we're just going to brush it down and yeah we'll we'll see what it looks like here All right, um, well, that seemed like it was actually quite a bit of paint. Um, it's doing better than I thought it would, to be honest. Um, that, yeah, that, that was quite a bit. It's uh, It seems very um, liquidy, if that's the right word. <laughs> It's not. Uh, it's definitely not holding much of a form. It's kind of gathering together in certain spots, and yeah. So now what we're gonna do here? I'm going to take some of this phthalo blue, and I'm gonna try to do the same amount for each one. So we're just gonna do a dab here because phthalo blue is pretty powerful with its tinting. And now with this, we'll, we will try to do again the same amount for each one, the equivalent of what's going to be a dab for each of the other ones. So about that much there. So we're trying to do about one part of each, one part thalo blue, one part white, which normally um, is going to result in pretty blue stuff. Um, so we're gonna see here, I got a uh, palette knife here it's stained a little bit red don't worry that's not red paint and we will mix these two together and see what our final result is and we will be able to leave it there to dry and compare it in the end to the other ones as well All right, one thing I want to do quick, um, this is the first time I've gone through this. I'm gonna take a little bit of this craft weight again and just do kind of like a drop there. And I want to spread that down by itself. There we go, that's kind of more what I was hoping for. Uh, I think I did too much on this side over here. That one will be a little bit of a mess, but that that's okay. <laughs> With how liquidy craft paint is, it's it doesn't surprise me that it turned out like that. So I'm gonna, going to rinse off my brush here. And we'll dry it off. Because we don't want to water down the other paint, so I've got a... It's actually an old shirt that I've just cut up. It had holes in it anyways, and so I've cut it up and I use it as painting rags now. All right, so our second one that we are going to be doing here is Artist Loft Level 1. So here we have the Artist Loft Level 1. You can see it says it's the academic level. This is the Michaels brand of paint. On the side there, it does have the hue, the value, the chroma, if that interests you. You can check that out in the photo. It says it's semi-opaque and its light fastness is one, which is good. Um, and then it just says in the back there that they're fast drying, water-based, and extremely versatile, ideal for use with many techniques and a variety of surfaces. All right, so let's take some of this here. It does come with a little foil cap, but I've already taken that off. So we will do 
just a little little bit there to start and you can see it's actually holding its um, holding its form pretty well if I was to tilt this upright you can see it's it's holding it good it's sticking out there and now let's take our brush here sorry let me adjust that canvas after I set it down there we go let's take this brush here and we will do a brush stroke down and we'll do a little bit of coverage kinda like we did with the other one I guess because that actually is quite a bit of paint Uh, I can feel, you know, I can feel that it's actually holding it a bit more than the other one. Than the craft paint for sure. Alright, we will leave that as is. And now we will do again what we did with the craft paint. So let's take a little bit of phthalo blue. And again, I'm trying to do just one part of each, so the same amount for each, that's what that is meaning there. And so if I do a little bit more of one or the other, in the end the results are still going to be the same. What I mean of one or the other, I mean one kind. So I think with the craft paint I did a little bit more thalo blue. So with this one here, there we go, that's about the same amount of each. I'm going to wipe off this palette knife. I've got a few other ones, but I may as well stick with this one for now. If I can just wipe it off. And let's mix these two and see what we get. Initial thoughts are it's looking pretty similar. It's looking a little bit lighter, um, but as you know, when acrylic paint dries, it does darken up. Um, but it's definitely looking um, looking lighter, which means it is more powerful at tinting. All right, that is our artist loft level one. Let us move on now to the Windsor and Newton Galleria acrylic. So here we have our Windsor and Newton one. On the front there it tells us the series and the color. If we go to the back though, it tells us the permanence is AA, has the pigment, and its light fastness is one, which is excellent. The little black square there is meaning it's opaque. So like I said, I've just got a small tube, but you can get bigger tubes. This just um, was one that I had on hand, so I didn't have to buy a new one. So let's do little bit there. I neglected to wipe off my brush from the last one so let's quickly do that. This water is going to be very white by the end of this. And we will dry off this brush. Alright so let's see how the Windsor Newton Stands up to the other ones so far. We'll just spread this down, make sure that's nice and dry. Oh, I guess I never said coming out of the bottle, it also held its form similar to the Artist Loft Level 1. I did a smaller amount here. I'll do one stroke on this side just with a little bit of what we had. Okay. I'm going to wipe this off right now while I'm thinking about it. Don't worry, I've got multiple shirt rags to dry off. Once this one gets too wet, then I'll be able to use the other one. All right, and again, let's grab some of this phthalo blue. I didn't know if the blue would be easy to see when it was first coming out, but it looks like it is, and especially once it's mixed 
with these whites, it's very easy for you guys to see there. So let's try to do an equal part of this white here. Uh, just a little bit more. Okay. The circle doesn't look as big between the two, but one is built up more than the other, so it's it's all good. Okay, we got our clean cleaned off palette knife here. Let's mix these two together and see what happens. All right, so initial reactions, I think you can see it there as well. It's actually a little bit lighter than the craft paint, but it's not as light as the Artist Loft Level 1, which is telling us that the Artist Loft Level 1 it has more of a, the their white, and I'm assuming the other colors that they would use as well, have more of a tinting power, um, which in my mind means they have more pigment than ones that don't tint as well. So there's that one. Let us move on to, I'm going to call it the PBO, the PBO, I don't know, PBO Studio Acrylic Paint. Here's our PBO Studio. Um, it says it's a high viscosity, which means it should be a little more heavy body. It is opaque. It's light fastness, it says, is one right there on the front. And on the back, it just tells us that it's a satin acrylic, and um, which means it'll have a little bit of shine to it when it dries. So as I said before, this one says opaque right on the bottle. So we will see how that handles itself. Okay, this one um, it says high viscosity. And sorry, I didn't do this for the last one. I mean, it does hold its shape. You can see there um, when it was coming out of the tube, it seemed um, not as thick as either the Artist Loft Level 1 or the Windsor Newton, to be honest with you. Um, it seemed a little bit a little bit thinner. Um, let us put this one down here, and we will see. I'm just drying off this brush. this off right now and dry it off okay let's grab some phthalo blue here Grab a little bit of this. Just a tiny bit more. Yeah, coming out of the tube, it definitely is a bit thinner than the Artist Loft, I would say. And the and the Windsor and Newton. Okay, we got our cleaned off palette knife. Let's do some mixing. All right, it's looking, um, it's looking very similar to the Artist Loft Level 1. It is lighter than the Windsor Newton and lighter than the, um, the craft paint. So this is telling, telling us that it does have more pigment, a stronger tinting power than, um, than those other ones. All right, let us move on to the Grumbachet. 
here we have the Grimbachet. This is an old one, <laughs> so hopefully it still is okay. And it just says titanium white. It's an Academy acrylic on the back. There you can see that the opaque vehicle is the acrylic poly polymer emulsion. Um, its light fastness is excellent. And that's about all it tells us here. You can get these in smaller, um, smaller ones as well. All right, we'll put a little dab up here. This is a little bit of an older bottle. So I hope that doesn't skew our results too much. Okay, let us do a little streak down here. It seemed thinner than the other ones coming out. Um, not as thin as the craft paint, but definitely thinner than these other three. Now let's take a little bit of that. And we are going to, yeah, that's definitely thinner than the other ones. Okay. And we'll grab some of this thalo blue here. Again, trying to do the same amount between the two. That's looking pretty good. Again, just need to wipe off my palette knife. And let's mix these two and see what we get. It seemed very liquidy coming out, and um, it's definitely darker than um, the rest here, as we see. Um, like I said, it, it is a little bit of an older tube, a few years old. Um, I, it usually doesn't affect paint that much, uh, from what I've noticed, but maybe that's what's causing this discrepancy here, because I would assume that this one would be would be better than that, um, but it's not. So take that one as you will. Let us move on to our next one, our Liquitex Basics. Here we have our Liquitex Basics. Titanium white is what it says on the front. If we look at the back there, it says permanent, water resistant, flexible, and dry. And at the very bottom there, it has a light fastness, fastness ranking of one. It says it's opaque. Um, same vehicle, the acrylic polymer emulsion, and the same pigment, the titanium dioxide. So light fat fastness a little bit less there. Coming out of the tube, it's very similar to the Artist Loft Level 1, the Windsor and Newton. It holds itself well. If I would have done this with the Grumbachet, I would have had a little bit of a streak going down there. I probably put too much down um, there, to be honest, because now I'm spreading this out. It goes pretty far. It feels good on the brush when you are painting it. It doesn't feel cheap or watery, um, to be honest at all. Um, I actually like the feel of the, the Liquitex Basics on the brush, as weird as that sounds, but you probably know what I, I'm talking about. 
All right, I'm just gonna rinse this off right now. As these paints dry on here, we're really gonna see um, the transparency of them against the black canvas behind. You can see some of them already starting to dry and how they're matching up against uh, the other ones. All right, let's get a little bit of phthalo blue here. Okay, could do a little bit more. Gotta love using new tubes of paint when they're nice and clean. <laughs> and we'll get some of our Liquitex paint here. Okay, that's a little too much. I'm going to use one of these knives and take some off of there. There we go, that's looking better. And now let's mix these two together and see what we get. Looking at these, right now it's looking that it is similar to the Windsor and Newton in tinting power. But I have worked a lot with Liquitex Basics versus the Artist Loft. And um, I have noticed that for other colors, the Liquitex Basics are much more vibrant and um, give you more of a saturated feel than a lot of the artist loft colors. They seem a little bit dull. That's similar to the craft paint. The craft paint is, um, a lot of the colors are very dull um, compared to the Liquitex Basics and other other um, brands like Windsor & Newton and also Grumbache that I've used. But in terms of tinting power, it's very similar to Windsor & Newton. Um, not quite as much as the PBO or the artist loft level one. All right, there's our top row, done that one. Let's move down to our bottom row. Our first one we have is Stevenson. Here's our Stevenson, a Canadian brand. I've never used this one before. Looking forward to seeing how it goes. It's titanium white, professional acrylic is what it says. Um, it has a strong permanence. It says you can dilute it with water or Stevenson acrylic mediums, wash brushes and implements in water before they dry. Same kind of idea as other ones, Toronto, Canada on the back, series number one. I'm excited to use this. I've actually never used this <laughs> this brand or this, this paint before. Like I said, it is a Canadian brand. I am Canadian, so I'm happy to be using this one here on this video. It is a professional acrylic paint, so I'm hoping for some nice results here as we use this. All right, let's do a little streak test here. Mm, that feels pretty good. That's looking nice. Okay, rinse this off right now. And now let's grab some um, phthalo blue. I can already see that um, this white, you can see that brush stroke that I did right there. It's already looking way better than a lot of these other ones. Um, hopefully you can see that too. That it just is, it, you can barely see any black through it at all, even after just the one coat there. Okay, there's our a little blue there. Let's take a little bit more out of here. I've got a lot of white paint to use after this video. <laughs> I've got I've got a big canvas sitting behind me with some big plans for it. So 
and I think it'll be taking a lot of white. Uh, I could use just a tiny bit more on there. Okay, there we go. Moment of truth for Stevenson. Let's see how this one's going. It's looking, you can probably see it there, it's looking very similar to our Artist Loft Level 1 and our PBO Studio acrylics there. Very similar between those two. It's definitely lighter than the Windsor Newton, Grumbachet, Liquitex Basics, and the Craft Paint. Coming out of the tube though, it held its form nice. Sorry, I didn't say that again. I'm getting, I'm forgetting things here. Um, yeah, it held its form nice. It felt good on the brush. Um, like it was solid, it didn't feel cheap at all. You can you can feel a cheap paint compared to a nice paint. It felt nice, and um, it's looking like our transparency test there. It's doing a lot better than some of our other ones. All right, let us move on to Artist Loft Level Two. Here we have our Artist Loft Level Two. And it says right on it that it's a medium viscosity, so I'm expecting it to be a little bit, to flow a little bit. Um, it is a, the Michaels brand of their level two, so more of like the artist is what they call it there, you can see. On the back it says it's highly pigmented, can be used with mediums, clean with soap and water. It says it's opaque. Um, it has a light, light fastness of one, so similar to the Liquitex Basics. Um, and I'm just and similar to at the uh, artist loft level one as well. This is another one I've never used before. I guess I didn't mention it, but I've never used the PBO studio studio before either. And so I'm interested to see how this one works. It's wanting to come right out of the bottle there. So it, it holds its form nice. It also said it, it says it's a medium viscosity, like I said before. And so that means it will have a little bit of flow to it, but um, it should hold itself pretty well. Just making sure this brush is nice and dry. So I tried to put the Artist Loft level one, two, and three all close to each other so we can compare those. Same with the Liquitexes all beside each other so we can compare those easily as well. So the price difference, as I mentioned before, between these two um, is 50 cents for the bottle, but when you look at the price per unit, um, it makes it a bit more. You can refer back to that chart that I made there. So let's see here. It's looking not bad. It is looking better than the Artist Loft Level 1 to start. We'll see how it holds up there once it starts to dry. And now let's do our color test on it. Grab some of this Thalo Blue. Not enough. Ooh. Bit more out there okay and we'll take some of this here okay it's just sitting a little higher on itself that's why it looks like there's less of it but from your angle you can see a little shadow behind it actually there <laughs> but that's about the same amount let's mix those together here It's looking very similar to the level one in terms of tinting strength here. 
and very similar to what's right beside it too with the Stevenson. It looks just slightly lighter than each of those to be honest. Uh, it might be hard for you to see but from my angle here it looks just slightly lighter. All right, and now we get to do our next one, which is the Artist Loft Level 3. Here we have our Artist Loft Level 3. You can see it says Professional Level, so this is the Michaels brand. They're Level 3. It is high viscosity, which means it has a low flow rate, so it is heavy body. That's what that is meaning there. On the back, it says it has a high tinting scale. Well, sorry, no, it says it has a little bit over half of a tinting scale. It says a professional heavy bodied acrylic with high pigment load, brilliant permanent colors clean with soap and water. Um, it's light fastness is also a one same as the other two of that same brand and everything else looks the same as well So let's put some of this out here. I have used Some of artist loft level three stuff in the past when they first came out with it. I was interested about Just what it was what it would be like um, coming out of the bottle it does feel thicker than both the Artist Loft Level 1 and 2. feels like there's a bit more to it. Um, you would hope that with uh, higher, um, with a higher quality and I should say a high viscosity, which basically is trying to say heavy body. <laughs> that's what um, that's what it is meaning there. Because you can get expensive paints that are that are th um, more have a higher flow rate we will say um, but this has a nice feel to it coming out of the bottle and sticking on the canvas there let's see how this one spreads down looking at it already it does seem like especially this first brush stroke here um, is going to be performing better than our artist loft level 2 which is what you would hope for you would hope that they would they would do that for you um, and it is definitely looking better than our level one. Okay, I'm just rinsing that off so it's ready for our next one here. Um, some of the other level three paints that I've used in the past, um, I've used some raw umber, some yellow ochre, and um, also just a phthalo blue of this as well, and I've been happy with them. Um, raw umber isn't very powerful to begin with anyways and so it's it's been good the one that the one that I've used and it does come at a cheaper price point compared to other professional um, level paints so let's get some phthalo blue from golden brand here put a little bit more out okay And let's get some of this going here. Okay. Oh, it needs to be a tiny bit more. There we go. That's better. This time the phthalo blue was built up more than more than the white was. Um, all right, let's mix these two together and see what kind of mixture we get. All right, um, looking at these, it actually seems very similar to our level one there. It actually seems a shade darker than our level two, which is very interesting. And my, my measurements might have been slightly off, so they're probably very similar in tinting power. I wouldn't get uh, too hung up on that note, but yeah, from my little test here, 
the level two seem to do better than our level three in terms of um, its tinting power. Very interesting. All right, let's move on to our next one here, uh, golden. Here is our golden. You can see that it's uh, transparency on the little top there. It shows you a little swatch of paint. It, the black is coming through a little bit. It is opaque, those were from what it says with the little square. It has its light fastness of level one there with the sun on the front. And on the back, it just tells you some um, safe use of advice and produced with the same type of polymer dispersion as the other ones. You can get these in bigger, um, bigger tubes. I usually buy bigger ones, but for this experiment, I just needed a small one. All right, so coming out of the tube, it definitely holds its shape. As you can see here, there's like a little sprig there that's just, there's a little sprig there that's just holding its, <laughs> holding its form there, so that's fine. Okay, we got our brush here. Let's do a stroke down. Rinse this off. get some of the same brand, Golden Thalo Blue. Put this down here. Okay. Get some more of this white. looking pretty similar. And now let's mix these two up. doing an initial observation on our golden here. It's looking slightly darker than these ones. Um, it's definitely lighter than the Grumbershay and the Windsor and Newton. It looks a little bit darker than the PBO and the Artist Life. It looks very similar to the Liquitex Basics actually um, in terms of tinting power. All right, and let us move on to our next one. Here's our titanium white. It actually tells you on the front it's a series one. It's opaque. Its light fastness is one. Um, it's a heavy body. On the back, it kind of just tells you that same thing again. Then on the left-hand side there, you can see that it is all excellent and opaque. Series one and the pigment there. It's made in France. And that's about all we need to know for this one. So our Liquitex Titanium White Heavy Body. This is actually my go-to Titanium White. I love using this Titanium White. Um, it has a very thick feel as it comes out of the tube and as you're working with it. Um, you can really feel the paint um, compared to a lot of other ones. Sorry, I just kind of bumped the camera there.
even though golden is kind of its from what i've seen its main competitor um i do like the heavy body feel of these liquitex ones so let's do our brush stroke here and you can see even after that brush stroke the amount of texture i want to leave that so we can really see that the amount of texture in that in that paint that you can really see and like the thick texture that you can see um, so it feels a lot uh, more voluminous if that's the right word um, and I, I like that when I'm working with acrylic paint and so that is one reason that um, that my go-to is this Liquitex heavy body paint I am in no way affiliated with Liquitex though I wish I was <laughs> all right let us see though how it matches up I'm curious to see this because I've never never really matched it up with other ones before I used to use golden liquid uh, titanium white but then I switched to Liquitex purely for its its texture for its its consistency I love how how heavy it is okay there we go we got some of that let's see here how we do Um, where am I reaching here? Got too many paints on this work table. Yeah, even oh, the way it comes out here, you can really feel it. A little bit too much came out there. I'm gonna grab another palette knife and scoop a little bit out. You can even see the way I was able to scoop that out is almost like butter. <laughs> That's what they compare it to, I'm pretty sure. I've heard that comparison before. All right, let's mix these two up and see what we get. Um, it might be hard for you to notice, um, but it is the lightest that we've had so far. Interestingly enough, I'm, well, for me, I'm happy to hear that. Because <laughs> for my purposes in art, that means I've chosen the right one. That means um, it's, it's working the best, the best for me. I don't that means when I'm trying to just you know use a tint of color just a little bit with some white that the little bit of titanium white that I'm using from the Liquitex is going the furthest I don't have to use more of it to um, to get the same effects that I would with other ones all right and let us go on to our last one here our Liquitex soft body paint our Liquitex soft body has the same as the other one on the front, series one. It has the pigment right there for us. It's opaque, it's light fastness is one. Tells you that again on the side there, just with some more words. And that's about it. They're actually pretty straightforward with those ones. I like those. So this is another one I've never used before. I needed a 12th one to, uh, to do for this one here because I had one empty spot and I was at Michael's and there was some golden um, like, like acrylic ink or flow acrylics and I was looking at those ones but then I saw this soft body acrylic by Liquitex and I was like you know what that would be a fun one to try so it actually comes with this nozzle at the end which I've never used anything like that before we'll see what this kind of goes like here it's easy to put out the amount that you want that's for sure um, it does seem more liquidy if it's soft body, but it's seeming to, I don't know, what if we just went like this, let's see. I just went up. Uh, it kind of falls over on itself, but it, it holds itself okay. It's nice and clean after when you put it back in its little bottle. If I go like this with this one, you can see it down here. It's slowly starting to flow, actually, to go down, which is interesting. 
some of the other ones wouldn't like some especially these lower ones they wouldn't have done that and let us do a little test here yeah it definitely feels a lot softer than the uh, heavy body and you can see it was the same kind of idea with the craft paint or some of these ones up here with the edges how it spreads to the edges of your brush that is um, kind of a trademark of a thinner a thinner paint where instead of just creating its own texture like a lot of these ones on the bottom has done all right we'll leave that one we did quite a few brush strokes but it's still the same amount of paint so no need to worry there let's clean that off here and our last one here let's get a little bit of phthalo blue okay and this one should be easier to match up the right amount of paint because it's just coming out of this thing you can hear it you can shake it around pretty easily similar to like the craft paint how I could shake it around which is interesting just never used anything like this before and just a little bit more the price point on these are kind of interesting too they're in, in the middle there it's it's not uh, well, I guess it's it's similar to the heavy body, I guess. So depending on what you're looking for, maybe you maybe you would want this more of a fluid texture here. Let's mix these and see what we got going on here. Definitely flowing around more, doing its thing. I think it feels thinner, even mixed with the, the golden paint there. In terms of darkness, it's lighter than, or sorry, it's darker than the heavy body. It's lighter than golden, lighter than level three, similar to the level two, lighter than the Stevenson. It's similar to the PBO and the Artist Loft level one, and it's lighter than the Liquitex Basics, Windsor, Newton, Grumbachet, and the Craft. just got a lot of paint on my fingers that's okay all right so taking a look back here at some of the other ones that are st starting to uh, to dry more we can look at the craft paint it actually had better um, coverage or its transparency actually did better better than what I thought I think in the end it, it was more paint than the other ones that I used and that might be a, a, an, an effect of that or ca causing that. Its tinting power though was definitely less. Um, yeah, it has that more liquid feel to it so depending on what you're doing you can decide on that one. Um, we did just use white here but if you are, like I mentioned before as well, if you are using other colors of craft paint it's they're not as vibrant as actual artist colors and professional colors so be aware of that artist loft level one its tinting power was actually pretty good it matched up with some of the more expensive and professional paints in terms of transparency though it's coming it's coming through quite a bit it's gonna take a few layers if you want a nice pure white over a darker color um, if you're painting on a white canvas obviously it's not gonna be an issue um, Artist Loft, similar to Craft Paint in the sense that some of their colors aren't as vibrant as other ones such as Windsor & Newton, actually pretty much every other one here. They do have some colors that are vibrant, I don't want to knock them off totally, um, but some of the greens that I've used just haven't matched up with the vibrancy of these other ones. Windsor & Newton, I've started painting with Windsor & New Newton paints. I like using them. Um, they are kind of um, 
thinner, I guess you can say. Sometimes their opacity isn't as good as that opacity, opacity, I don't know. Transparency is comes through. Um, they do seem a bit more liquidy than others. They're not very, um, they're not as heavy body as some of the other ones that I like. Their tinting powers you can see here. It's not as dark as Artist Loft and some of the um, some of the uh, more professional paints here. It does match up very similar to the Golden in terms of tinting power. Um, but for the price point, that's why I started with them. They were a pretty good price point. And so that's, yeah, I went from there with that. The PBO Studio, first time using it. Looking at now at its transparency, it's, yeah, it's dry. It matches up similar to the Windsor and Newton there, and even the Artist Loft Level 1. Its uh, mixing ability matches up similar to the Artist Loft Level 1. Um, it could be something I would look into using a little bit more, maybe with some practice stuff that I'm doing. But, um... Yeah, that's about it. The Grumbochet, Grumbochet in terms of transparency there, it actually did a little bit better than those other three, even for uh, how liquidy this one seemed coming out. I hope I don't think they're all that liquidy, um, but in terms of its uh, mm -hmm. mixing power there, it did worse than all of the others except for the craft paint. Actually, and now it's actually looking now that it's starting to dry a little bit, it's looking darker than the craft paint. Again, it might be because it's old. I'm not sure. Our Liquitex Basics, it felt good on the brush, as I mentioned before. Um, it's doing better in terms of opacity or transparency. I'm going to stop saying that because I don't need to not say it right. It's transparency um, than the Windsor Newton Artist Loft. It's looking similar here to the Grumbache but its tinting power was a lot more. It was similar to the Artist Loft Level 1 here and the PBO Studio. But like I said, it felt better on the brush. It didn't gather as much on the sides. It did still a little bit, but not as much as some of these other ones. And I use Liquitex Basics for a lot of my practice paintings. Um, I use them in my paint by number kits because I like the vibrancy of their colors there. Um, even though they are cheaper, um, they are still a good they're I think they're 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 good paint um, to use Liquitex has done a good job with with that one um, let's move on here to the Stevenson this is my only experience with Stevenson so if there are some other colors I would be interested in that in terms of its transparency it did phenomenal here it came in second in terms of um, its coverage there I'm, I'm very impressed with that in terms of its mixing as you could see it is similar to the Windsor and Newton um, it's a little bit a uh, little bit lighter than the Liquitex or sorry a little bit darker than the Liquitex basics well, pretty pretty close actually it did well there but again it's its coverage there phenomenal it felt good coming out of the tube it was nice and thick if you like that heavy body feel um, they are Canadian um, I got this at a local college, so you can, if you're Canadian, maybe you can find them, or you could probably find them online too. I'll link something below if you can see them. Um, let's move on to our Artist Loft Level 2. Looking at this now, it did okay. It it did a little bit better than our Level 1 there. Not as good as some of these other ones. Um, kind of kind of similar to our Liquitex Basics, but in terms of transparency um, it felt okay it was a little bit liquidy coming out there and you can see it almost gathered together a little bit on the brush itself and not that this brush is anything phenomenal but it can it kind of gathered together more than other ones here in terms of our mixing there it did well um, it did well our, our artist loft level three um, it did better than the other two which is good. That's what we wanted to see. Um, it probably came in just under the golden heavy body in terms of transparency test, um, which is all right. And its mixing power was not quite as good as level two. Maybe my mixing things were off there, but it, it did all right. And for the price point to be just under golden in terms of its... Uh, 
transparency test, that's that's pretty good. If we move on to golden, I've used golden a lot in in my paintings. I, I use, still use it a lot. Golden and Liquitex have been my have been my go-to. Um, it did well. It came in third for our transparency test. For the mixing, it actually didn't do as good as I thought, which was interesting. Um, but I do like the feel of golden if you want a little bit more of a fluid feel with the, the heavy body pigment to it. Um, it did pretty well with that. But I guess that is similar to the Artist Loft in terms of um, overall feel. It's not as thick as other ones, but still, um, still on that professional grade there. Moving over to our Liquitex Heavy Body, I've already talked about it. This one, oh, that's actually still wet. <laughs> um, but this one came in first in terms of, oh, sorry, I hit the camera again. Let's let that settle. Um, it came in first in terms of transparency test. Phenomenal. I love the feel. It's so thick when it comes out of the tube there. Um, and it came in first in terms of our mixing and mixing power there, tinting power. Um, if you want some texture without having to add in a lot of mixing gels or anything like that, Liquitex Heavy Body is something I would highly recommend. Uh, and our last one, Liquitex Soft Body, I've never used it before, but it, it was interesting. And it actually, oh, it's probably still wet. Oh no, it's dry there now. Ridges are still wet. Um, it kind of covered it more fluidly similar to some like our craft or our artist loft level one its transparency is similar to its basics but it seemed like it almost cov like its overall coverage was better if i was to do another layer of that i think it would look good and in terms of its tinting ability it did better than the basics better than gold and similar to our artist loft level two yeah similar to our artist loft level two our PBO studio and artist loft level one there which is interesting um and that's kind of a quick look at all of them so depending on what you are doing is going to determine which is the best for you i hope that this video here showing you kind of the consistency of each of them how they are acting on the palette will help you decide what you need like i said for me i like to use texture in a lot of my acrylic paintings and so for me, the Liquitex Heavy Body is giving me that most texture and giving me the most, um, for me, what I'm looking for, right? It's it's a, the most powerful color there, and the colors are the other colors that I can use are nice and vibrant and so forth. If you're looking for something that is a bit more flow to it, um, and it isn't so thick but still has nice coverage, that's where you can look into your Goldens or Artist Loft Level 3s, um, your Stevenson was even kind of along there, kind of in between your Liquitex Heavy Body and Golden Heavy Body for texture. But even your Liquitex Soft Body, it flows very nicely. It flows, yeah. I, if you're looking for a nice smooth, um, smooth um, go at it there, that could be what you're going for. In terms of kind of looking at some of the cheaper ones, and if you're wanting some good um, paint, that's cheap to practice with. I would recommend Liquitex Basics from my experience with them. They are they are pretty good. Um, but along that same price point, that's where you're still getting your Artist Loft Level 2 is similar in there. Your Artist Loft Level 1 is just slightly cheaper. I would probably stay, well, no, I don't want I don't want to sound mean, but I would go with Liquitex Basics over Artist Loft Level 1. Your Artist Loft Level 3, is obviously more expensive um, but um, it, kind of that middle ground if you're wanting more of that professional quality um, you could go with that um, then we have our Windsor and Newton our Grumba shade like I said I did start painting with Windsor and Newton they're 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 good paints um, I find them to be a little bit thinner than the Liquitex Basics in terms of consistency when they're coming out of the tube. So that one's up to you on that one. And Craft Paint, the white actually, it did okay. It did better than what I thought it would. Um, but like I said, the other colors are just so um, dull that I would not recommend practicing um, or having a good quality practice with it. Um, let's just put it that way. 
So I know this one was a long one. I appreciate you sticking out with this one and watching this video. I hope that it really helped you decide what kind of paint is best for you at this time and for whatever project you are working on. So make sure you subscribe and hit the like button and we will see you next time on Brian Sloan Artist.